Okay, so this lesson's about direct variation. Whenever you think of direct variation, you already know um, the equation for a slope intercept, right? Y equals mx plus b. Direct variation is just specifically talking about this portion of that equation. So it does not include a y-intercept. It always, always, always goes through the origin, or 0, 0. So if you ever get an equation, just say I get y equals 2x plus 14, you can automatically know this is not direct variation because it cannot have a y-intercept other than 0. Okay? When you are looking at a direct variation equation, the k, y equals kx, that k is your slope or you'll hear it called the rate of change. So in this case, what is my rate of change? Uh, two. Y equals two X. Right. As I have two of one thing, I get one of another because my slope is technically two over one, right? Okay. You'll also hear this called the constant of variation. Write that in your journals. Constant, I'm gonna write it over here. Y equals two X that 2 is the constant of variation. Okay? So what you're going to do in this lesson is recognize whether something is or is not direct variation. What are the two things you have to have to have direct variation? No y-intercept, it has to be 0. And then you have to have it where you have the slope in front of the x. So it has to be in this format, y equals kx. So make sure you've written that y equals kx in your journals. So let's look at example one. All right, we have a part A and a part B, so I'll put them both up here. Okay, so it says the instructions are to tell whether X and Y show direct variation and then explain yes or no. So they give you a chart. The fastest way to do this is to find the slope and Y-intercept or graph it. Uh, in this case, graphing it doesn't take very long because they're pretty small slopes, uh, pretty small coordinates. So if you look here, I've... The answer book has graphed them. What do you notice about this line? They're going by twos. It's going by twos, right? Mm -hmm. So can I tell my slope real quick? Mm -hmm. What's my slope? Up two over one? Mm -hmm. So two x. Now what's my y-intercept? Mm -hmm. It's way over here, right? Mm -hmm. So it's plus or it's negative something, isn't it? negative, uh, let's just say five or six, we're not sure. But because I, I don't really need to know what it is, does that tell me anything about this line? Is it direct variation or not? It's not. Not, why not? Because it goes the thing in the back. It has to go through the origin. It has, it has a y-intercept, it has to go through the zero. So since this is not plus zero, or nothing, this is not direct variation. And I'm going to let you guys abbreviate direct variation. Okay, so you can either graph all those points and just see does this line go through the origin? Or you can put it in slope intercept form like this and see if there's a y intercept. I don't care which way you do it. All right, let's look at the next one. We've, they've graphed all these points. You see that it's a nice straight line. What's my slope? Um, it'll be 2 and 2. Up 2 over 2. So right now I'm y equals 2 over 2 is just 1, right? Mm -hmm. Y equals 1x. What is my y-intercept? Where does it cross the y-line? Huh? Zero. Yeah, right here. That's the y-intercept. So I would say plus zero, but do you have to say plus zero? No. No. So is this in direct variation form? Yes. Yes. You're going to say yes, direct variation. 
Why do you know that? Because it crosses. It goes through the origin. That's the biggest thing. So the origin is always in the middle. Zero, zero. Okay. On a graph, the origin is zero, zero. If you want to write that in your journals, origin equals zero comma zero, like this. That's the origin. Okay? Any questions on that? Okay, now let's look at the break form. This is example two. So for A, we have y plus 1 equals 2x. Is this in direct variation form? Remember, what is direct variation form? y equals kx. So is this currently in that form? No. No, so we need to solve it for y. So how do I get the y by itself? I gotta move this plus one, right? So I gotta subtract one from both sides. That leaves y equals two x minus one, because I can't combine those, because this one has an x, this one doesn't. Looking at this, is this direct variation? Mm, no. Yes. I have conflicting answers. One no, two yeses. What do you think, Leslie? No, why not? Because this one means it doesn't go through the origin. Very good. So this would be not direct variation. So you're just changing it. You have to solve for y. And then if you have a y-intercept other than 0, then it's not direct variation. Oh, because it doesn't go through. Because it, it doesn't go through the origin. If I were to graph this, it would go through right here has to, has to, have to go through this middle zero, zero. Oh, so that's not Does that make sense? Yeah. So if there's anything attached to the end of this equation, plus, minus, <laughs> anything, it's not direct variation. It has to go through the origin. Okay, let's look at B. One half y equals x. Is this solved for direct variation? No, the y is not by itself, so we've got to get the y by itself. How do I get that one half out of there? Multiply or divide? Divide. Divide. Now, since it's a fraction, when you divide a fraction, you actually flip it multiply. and multiply. So f times 2 over 1. So that's canceled. I'm left with y equals 2 over 1 is just 2x. Is this direct variation? Yes. Yes, because there's no y-intercept other than 0. So you'd say yes, direct variation. Because that's, there's 0, right? Yeah. You can see this right here, it's written in my direct variation for up here at the top. Y equals KX, K being 2, right? K mm -hmm. equals 2. What a, what's another name for what K is besides slope? Oh, um, told it to you. It's in your notes. I told you to write it down. Oh, yeah. Constant variation. Constant of variation. Very good. Very good. Okay. Now, on your own number one, put this on your papers. I'm actually going to put numbers one, two, and three on here. Okay, so here's numbers one, two, and three. What we're going to be doing is tell whether X and Y show direct variation. Explain your reasoning. So the fastest way to check these is probably to graph them. You could find the slope and find the y-intercept, but that's double the work, I think. So in order to graph these, I need a little graph. So you guys need little graphs. Okay, so um, number one, we're going to graph. What is my first point? Zero, negative two, right? Yes. 
So on the X line, I start at zero, and then on the Y line, I go down to two. Yeah. So do I need to do any more? Look at that. Where's that dot? Right. It's on the Y line. Is it in the origin? No. So am I going to be able to have direct radiation? No. So do you want to keep going? No. All right then. So we can say it's already there. Anyway. It's already there. So no direct variation. <coughs> you can already tell that it's crossed the Y line, not at zero zero. Do you want us to cut it out on tape? No, you can just staple it to it. Now I could graph all of these. You know, uh, one one. Have to be all of them. Two, four. What do you mean have to be all of them? Above the, um, do we have to graph all of them? No. Do they all, all have to be on the line for it not, for it to be direct variation? They all have to, they have to be a straight line and it has to go through the origin. So has to go through that in this case, it, it doesn't go through the origin. It goes here. All right, let's do number two. Whoa. I just want to shrink this. It shrank the whole thing. All right, I'm going to do blue this time. Okay, so my first point is at 1, 4. So I go over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4. My next is 2, 8. 1, 2, 3. And then 3. I don't have to keep, I don't have enough room to keep going. 3, 12. Okay, so 1, 4. So what's my slope? Uh, if I go between these two, I went over how many? Four, one. Yeah, because I go over one, rise over run. Sorry, I go up first. Went up four over one. So my slope is four over one. So if I were to go backwards uh, to find the point on the y intercept, I go down four, back one. Is that at zero, zero? Yes. Yes. yes, so then my <laughs> equation looks like this. Y equals 4x, right? Yeah. Is this direct variation? Yes. yes. Yes, direct variation. Good. All right, let's do this next one. Negative 2, 4, so I go back 2, up 4, right? Back 2, up 4. Right there, so then my next one is back 1, up 2. My next one is at 0, 0, and my last one is at 1, comma 2. Maybe we do got to graph everything just in case this happens. All right, so what do you see about this line? Well, it's not even straight. I was going to say, does it go through the origin? No. Sure, but what do you notice happens? It's a V. It's a V. So is this a straight line? No. So is this direct radiation? No. No. So it has to be a straight line. It has to be a straight line. That is part of the rule. Not direct radiation. You yeah. reduce it. So number one, maybe, I mean, I did eventually go graph the whole thing, but maybe you should graph all the points just in case. Was number one the right answer? Still? Yeah, it's still the right answer. I was thinking. Yep. All right, everybody got these? Okay, mm -hmm. let's do number four on your... No, because it forms a V. It has to lie on a straight line. And so now they've given us X, Y equals three. So in order to get this, we need to get y by itself, right? Mm -hmm. So how do? Yes, ma'am. Um, was number three just there? To have direct variation. All right. So how do we get y by itself here? 
It is multiplication, so we divide. divide. Very good. So I'm going to divide by x. Cancels the x. I have y equals 3 over x. Is that written in direct variation format? No. No. Direct variation should y equals kx. In this case, we have y equals k over x. So no, this would be not direct variation. Okay, on your paper, I want I want this work. Show me all of this on your paper. Don't just write the answer. All right, number five, we have x equals one third y. Okay, is the y by itself? Uh, no. no, so what do I do to move that one third? Uh, multiply. multiply times what? Three over one. The flipped fraction times three over one, which is just three. So then I get three x equals y. Can I just flop this over and say y equals three x? Yeah. Yes, you can, it's so the that, same thing. That, that's so yes, this is direct variation. Yeah. Okay, so from here I solved. I did 3 over 1 times 1 third, so cancels. Then 3 over 1 times x is just 3x. But I wanted the y on the left side, so I just flipped the whole equation so that way I could have the y on the side I wanted it. Either way, it's still correct. The point is you got it into this format. Everybody got number five? Yes. All right, let's do number six. Y plus one equals X. So how do I get the Y by itself? Minus, minus one. So I get Y equals X minus one because you can't combine those. Is this direct variation? No. Why not? Because it has the B in the back. <laughs> The y-intercept. It has the y-intercept in the back, not at not at zero. Very good. Wait, why wasn't it a direct variation? Because you can't have plus or minus anything after the equation. If I had y equals x, you would have direct variation because technically there's a one right here. But it's always plus zero on the end. If this is ever not plus zero, if it's anything other than that, it's not direct variation. If I were to graph this line, it would, it would go across down here. Good questions. All right, good? All right, let's look at example three. Put this in your journal. All right, the height of Y, the height Y, excuse me, of a television screen varies directly with its width X. So we know it's going to be a direct variation, which is Y equals KX, okay? The first question they ask us is find the height when the width is 48 inches, okay? In this equation, Y equals KX, which one represents the height? Right here. K, Y. Y, right? So this is the height, and then X is the width. Everybody understand that? Yeah, write it down. So it says find the height when the width is 48 inches. So first of all, we need to know what is our, oh, it's right here. It tells you. There's your equation. Y equals 9 sixteenths is called your what? Your interface. Your constant Const of variation, which is also your slope, okay? So in this case, we're going to plug in the width of 48. Where am I plugging in the width? Where the x is. So I'm going to say y equals 9 sixteenths times 48. Because we're just putting in, they, they told us. Oh, yeah, because you're putting in the X. They told us X, or the width, is 48. 
So we plug it in and solve. So what is 9 sixteenths times 48? Go, go, calculators, go. 9 Very good. 9 sixteenths times 48 is 27 what? Inches, because we're measuring a TV. So the height of this TV is 27 inches. Okay, the next thing they want you to do is graph it. So we're going to grab a little graph paper and graph this. Okay, my y-intercept is what? Your y-intercept is 27. This is drag variation. Where's my y-intercept? In direct variation, what is always the y-intercept? It has to go through where? The zero. The zero. So my y-intercept is always, always. So you in, when you're dealing with direct variation, always, always, always know your point is right there in the very middle. Because then we just need our constant of variation, a.k.a. our slope, to, f to graph this. Okay, so what's my rise over run? 9 over 16, right? So I'm going to go by twos on these lines because to make it fit. So I'm going to go up 9, which is up uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, and then a half makes 9. And then over 16, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 12, 14, 16. So there's my next point. And then connect them. Okay, the Y stood for height, right? And the X stood for width. So as my TV grows in height, what happens to the width? That's my phone. As my TV gets taller, what happens to the width? It goes shorter. It gets wider. Look at the graph. Oh. As one gets taller, the other one gets wider. Good. Any questions? So I don't understand how you got that point over there. This one? And it's the six, yeah. Okay, this, this is my slope. Yes. So from my origin, I counted up 9 and over 16. Oh, by half? Well, I just did it in twos. The, oh. Each line counted as two, so it's halfway between this is because oh, it's 9. Because it's... Got it then? Okay. Number seven on your paper, last one. Your earnings, Y, in dollars vary directly with the number of lawns you mow. Use the equation Y equals 7.5X to find how much you earn when you mow five lawns. So we want to know five lawns worth of money. Where am I going to plug that five? Uh, the X. Very good. So I'm going to say 7. Y equals 7.5 times five. What is 7.5 times five? Thirty-seven point five. Now this says, what does Y represent? Look in your in your question. Your earnings. So money. So is this in money format? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the Close. I need to put a zero. Always go to two decimals. And how do I label this? $37.50. Dollars. So if I mow five lawns, I get $37.50. And and yeah. So this is your answer. Correct. All right. Any questions on how to do this lesson? No? Good? All right. Turn in on your own since you're all going to study for history anyhow. 
Yes, you're, this was on your own, numbers one through seven. You're gonna do the practice and problem solving numbers four through 29.